Hello and welcome, and thank you all for being here. A year and a half ago, with rising questions about the future of NAFTA, I was asked how we would respond. My answer was that we'd respond as Canadians always have in uncertain times. We'd be constructive and reasonable, but we'd also be firm. We'd protect our interests and promote our values. We'd show determination and also flexibility, and we would remain united. And ultimately, we'd emerge stronger. Well, that's exactly what we did. Last night, Canada reached an agreement in principle with the United States and Mexico on a modernized and updated North American Free Trade Agreement. It will now be called the USMCA, the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement. It's an agreement that, when enacted, will be good for Canadian workers, good for Canadian business, and good for Canadian families. It's an agreement that removes uncertainty for our manufacturers and investors and improves labour rights for all North Americans. And it's an agreement that will be profoundly beneficial for our economy, for Canadian families and for the middle class. When we began the work of updating NAFTA, we kept our focus on what really matters. The new agreement would need to preserve jobs, foster growth, expand the middle class and support people working hard to join the middle class. It also needed to be fair, which meant that it would have to preserve the fundamental principle of the original agreement, which is that when your trading partner is 10 times your size, you need rules. You need a level playing field. Unless the new agreement achieved those objectives, we wouldn't sign it. Well, simply put, the new agreement had to be good for Canada and for Canadians. Parce que la réussite des accords commerciaux ne se mesure pas avec des données ou des statistiques, mais par la façon dont ils aident à améliorer la vie des gens, par leur capacité à protéger l'emploi des travailleurs et à en créer de nouveaux, par la possibilité qu'ont nos petites et moyennes entreprises de percher, percer les marchés nord-américains, par les nouvelles opportunités qu'auront ceux qui travaillent fort et par la façon dont ces opportunités sont offertes à tous et profitent au plus grand nombre. Il faut le dire, la modernisation de l'ALENA n'a pas été une mince tâche. Certains ont dit que ce n'était pas possible de le faire et qu'on devrait accepter n'importe quel accord. Ce n'est pas ce que nous avons fait. Nous avons insisté pour obtenir un bon accord. Comme toute négociation importante, il a fallu faire des compromis. Et je vous l'avoue, certains ont été plus difficiles que d'autres. Nous n'avons jamais cru que ce serait facile. Ça n'a pas été le cas non plus. Mais aujourd'hui est une bonne journée pour le Canada. C'est en nous concentrant sur la création d'opportunités et la croissance de la classe moyenne que nous sommes arrivés ici, tout en préservant les parties les plus importantes de l'ALENA, celles qui favorisent la réussite des entreprises et l'équité pour les Canadiens. And I want to stress, Canada got here because we kept our focus and our collective resolve, even when some were recommending we capitulate. A word of caution. We're not yet at the finish line. This agreement still needs to be ratified in Mexico, in the United States, and in Canada. But what I can say is that free and fair trade in North America, a trading zone that accounts for more than a quarter of the world's economy, with just 7% of its population, is in a much more stable place than it was yesterday. We now have a path forward. This is an extraordinarily complex agreement, just as the original NAFTA was. But let me sum up what it means. It means that when this agreement is enacted, NAFTA will be preserved, updated, modernized, and stabilized for the 21st century, as we set out to do. It means Canadian workers and their families will enjoy greater opportunities than ever before, and more prosperity means more resources to invest in things like housing, health care, and a more secure retirement for our seniors. 
Alongside our new European and trans-Pacific trade agreements, today we are securing a higher standard of living long into the future for the people of Canada. Before I ask Minister Freeland to get into some of the details of the agreement, I want to express my gratitude. We are very grateful to all the people from every corner of the country, from all walks of life, from all political points of view, who joined us in this effort, who supported and sustained it through the past 13 months. Especially and particularly, I have to thank every Canadian, and there were thousands of them, who wrote letters and emails and who stopped me in the street to say, keep at it, stay strong, we are with you. I want to thank the premiers, the leaders from industry and labour, Brian Mulroney and his original NAFTA negotiating team and other former Prime Ministers, members of our NAFTA Council. Thank you all for your support, your advice and your patriotism. Minister Freeland, Christian, for your tireless, relentless efforts, for your dedication, your hard work, not only in the past five weeks, but in the past 19 months. Thank you, and thank you to your family as well. I know, like so many of our families, Graham, Natalka, Halina, and Ivan uh, missed you a bit, but knew you were doing extraordinarily important work. We owe you all a debt of gratitude. No minister in a generation has been given a more difficult task than this one, and you delivered. Chief Negotiator Steve Verhuel, who's here in the room with us, thank you, Steve, for being so extraordinary, so focused, and such a great Canadian. Everything you did, every step of the way, got us to this point. And David McNaughton, in Washington, uh, on the front lines of the conversations with Congress, with the administration, with stakeholders in the United States. David, you have been uh, an extraordinary resource, friend, and a valuable asset to all Canadians as we've moved forward on this together. I also want to thank Ambassador Bob Lighthizer. He is a tough, principled negotiator, a veteran of 40 years of trade agreements, but he also understands and appreciates Canada. It's fair to say that this would not have come together without him. Likewise, to Secretary Ildefonso Guajardo of Mexico, muchas gracias, mi amigo. I'd like now to turn it over to Christia. Minister Freeland. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Uh, and thank you for your resolve and your leadership. Uh, and your patriotism. They have been at the heart of our work and the foundation of everything. I'm really grateful. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I want to start uh, by echoing the Prime Minister's sentiment and his thanks to everyone, uh, above all, our outstanding trade negotiators. Um, they are amazing, and I am very grateful, very, very grateful. And uh, I also want to thank the trade negotiators from the other two countries. Uh, this has really been 24-7 for a lot of people for a long time. Uh, people have gone above and beyond the call of duty, and I'm really, really grateful. I said when we began that there would be moments of drama, and there have been. Through it all, Ambassador Lighthizer has been a professional, reliable, and trustworthy counterpart. And I can say, especially after the past few weeks of very intense negotiations, what we called our continuous negotiation, he's someone I consider a friend. Thank you, Bob. Mexico's Secretary Ildefonso Guajardo has likewise been a valued and respected counterpart, and I consider him to be a friend too. Muchas gracias, Ildefonso. So here's what today's agreement will achieve. Tout d'abord, et c'est la chose la plus importante, il maintient le libre-échange à l'échelle du continent nord-américain ainsi que l'accès au sein du marché régional d'une valeur de 25 000 milliards de dollars qui compte 470 millions de personnes et dont la taille a triplé depuis la création de l'ALENA en 1993. 
En même temps, il nous protège contre le spectre des droits de douane sur le secteur automobile qui planait sur notre économie et des milliers de bons emplois bien rémunérés de deux côtés de la frontière. En soi, c'est une victoire pour les Canadiens. De plus, ils maintiennent l'accès en franchise de droits de, de la grande majorité des exportations canadiennes au marché américain. Ça ne veut pas dire que nous n'allons pas continuer de diversifier nos échanges à travers le monde. C'est certain que nous allons continuer de le faire. Mais ça nous permettra de solidifier notre position au sein du marché nord-américain qui nous est particulièrement important pendant que nous continuerons d'élargir notre accès à des marchés dans d'autres pays. Cet accord est bon pour des centaines de milliers de travailleurs canadiens. Non seulement il préserve les chaînes d'approvisionnement transfrontalières essentielles, mais il améliore considérablement les salaires et les droits du travailleur mexicain. Concrètement, c'est plus équitable pour les travailleurs de l'automobile dans des villes comme Windsor ou Oshawa. Ça aide à garantir leur avenir. Cet accord maintient aussi l'exception culturelle demandée par le Canada, notamment dans l'espace numérique qui protège nos industries culturelles et plus de 650 000 emplois partout au pays. Il préserve notre identité canadienne unique et notre caractère bilingue. Let me cite one of my favorite prime ministers, Louis Saint Laurent, who said in 1953, speaking of America, we know it is not your wish to have on your border a mere replica of your own country, but rather a self-respecting community faithful to its own ways. We are thus better neighbors because self-respect is the key to respect for others. I think he put that very well. And there is something that is extremely important and of which I think we can all be particularly proud. Today's agreement fully upholds the impartial dispute resolution of Chapter 19 of the original NAFTA. When there's a disagreement over trade, it goes to an independent binational panel and that panel gets to decide. Without Chapter 19, many of you will remember, there would have been no NAFTA in the first place. En fait, le Canada a eu recours à cette disposition à plusieurs reprises, notamment dans le cadre du différent sur le bois d'œuvre résineau, pour garantir le traitement équitable des travailleurs canadiens. Le Premier ministre a déjà dit, et je veux le rappeler, que nous devions préserver le commerce fondé sur des règles. Les États-Unis sont dix fois plus grands que nous. Il était absolument nécessaire de garder le mécanisme de règlement des différents. Et nous l'avons fait. Les producteurs laitiers du Canada, leurs familles et leurs communautés peuvent compter sur le plein appui de notre gouvernement. Ça n'a pas changé depuis le début des négociations. Je vous le confirme. Cet accord préserve et maintient le système de gestion de l'offre. Il prévoit une certaine libéralisation de l'accès au marché, semblable à celle du CITA et du PTP déjà conclue. Mais l'avenir de la gestion de l'offre n'est pas remis en cause. Pour atteindre les effets de ces changements, le gouvernement promet à nos producteurs qu'ils seront entièrement et justement compensés pour toute perte du parc du marché. Le gouvernement va aussi travailler avec eux pour renforcer encore plus leur industrie. De plus, 
Nos consultations avec les producteurs laitiers nous ont convaincus de former un nouveau groupe de travail avec des intervenants de l'industrie pour formuler une stratégie qui nous permettra de maintenir la vigueur de notre industrie laitière aujourd'hui et demain. The original NAFTA contained a clause that eroded Canada's sovereign control over our energy resources, known as the proportionality clause. That's now gone. We also fought for and won administrative changes that will save the oil patch more than $60 million a year in burdensome fees and costs. The investor state dispute resolution system that has allowed companies to sue the Canadian government is also gone between Canada and the United States. Known as ISDS, it has cost Canadian taxpayers more than $300 million in penalties and legal fees. ISDS elevates the rights of corporations over those of sovereign governments. In removing it, we have strengthened our government's right to regulate in the public interest, to protect public health and the environment, for example. We have a new enforceable environment chapter that upholds air quality and fights marine pollution. And pivotally, we have reached an agreement on cars and car parts, inspired by creative Canadian ideas, which, as some of you will remember, we put forward in our talks in Montreal back in January. That was a key turning point in this negotiation, and one which made all of the subsequent progress possible. Since the Auto Pact, Canada has been an integral and essential part of the North American auto industry with its highly integrated supply chains. We fought for that, and we have preserved it and created opportunities for growth. Let me turn it over back to the Prime Minister. Thank you, Christia. I'm looking forward to signing this agreement with Presidents Trump and Peña Nieto. And I really would like to stress this point. This will be good for workers in all three of our countries. Au cours des derniers mois, j'ai parlé avec des Canadiens travaillants et admirables dans des entreprises à travers le pays. Je tiens à leur dire, nous vous avons entendu. En effet, quand les dispositions exécutoires sur les droits du travail de cet accord seront en vigueur, il s'agira de la réforme progressiste la plus importante pour les travailleurs nord-américains en une génération. De plus, en tant que Québécois, je sais à quel point l'exception culturelle est essentielle pour préserver notre identité et continuer de faire rayonner notre culture. Bien évidemment, L'accord comporte également plusieurs autres aspects qui sont complexes. Notre équipe a encore beaucoup de travail à terminer et rien n'est encore garanti car le Canada ne décide pas ce qui se passe au Congrès américain ou au Sénat mexicain. La dernière année a été marquée par beaucoup d'incertitudes. Et je préfère le dire franchement, certaines inquiétudes persistent. Cela dit, l'annonce d'aujourd'hui est un grand pas en avant. C'est la voie que nous devons suivre pour entrer dans une nouvelle ère de prospérité et de stabilité économique en Amérique du Nord pour le bien des millions de gens qui dépendent d'une économie florissante pour subvenir aux besoins de leurs familles et assurer un avenir meilleur à leurs enfants. Ces négociations étaient, étant maintenant derrière nous, nous pouvons aller de l'avant avec la certitude que notre économie est solide et qu'elle le restera en même temps que nous continuerons à diversifier nos échanges commerciaux dans d'autres marchés à travers le monde. Along with CETA, our European trade deal, the CPTPP, our Trans-Pacific Accord, and Canada's other trade agreements, Canadians now benefit from free trade with one and a half billion consumers around the world representing two-thirds of the global economy. This is a very good position to be in. Add to this the fact that Canada is the only G7 country that has free trade agreements with every other G7 country. We will therefore continue to be extremely well placed for our businesses to reach new markets, hire new workers, and provide ever greater opportunities for Canadians. From Singapore to Kiev, 
from the northernmost point of the Americas to the southernmost. We are part of a global free trade network governed by rules that benefits consumers and workers alike. And the fact is, when it comes to trade, our businesses are thriving right now. Our merchandise exports hit an all-time high in June, the highest in our history. And middle-class families are benefiting from that success. Unemployment is at a 40-year low. These are the conditions we have preserved and will improve with this agreement. My friends, Canadians are among the most enterprising and innovative people on the planet. We have a lot more work to do, but we are on the right track. We didn't get here by accident. Throughout these negotiations, we are, and we all, governments and Canadians, remained focused on what matters most, building opportunity for workers and for their families. Our government's purpose, first, last, and always, is to create the conditions to grow a stronger middle class and improve opportunities for Canadians. That is what we achieved today. It's an important step in the right direction, and it is something of which we and our partners can be very proud.